Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. On today's video, we're going I'm bringing to you guys another reaction video. I'm trying to upload five videos per week. Um so yeah, so um what I was going to say. My internet for some reason is acting weird. So um Hopefully, I can get through this video. Um, so, I'm going to apologize ahead of time for that. I'm also going to apologize ahead of time for um, for me frequently pausing the video. I'm trying not to do that so much because I did it on yesterday and I hated it. So, uh, so if you guys don't know, also, my reaction videos i do not edit them i will not edit them um they are raw so whatever you see on this video and on my screen is what you're going to get in that video so let's get started so let me go ahead and minimize myself and of course this video i will have all the details to this video um, linked below. So let's go ahead and maximize that so you guys can see it. Um. So yeah, let's get this show on the road. Some criminals are <clears throat> incredibly intelligent, able to evade justice for months, years, or even a lifetime. Others, not so much. Even those who break the law can fall victim to the powerful urge to share their lives online, overriding their common sense completely. Today, we'll be looking at 10 of the dumbest criminals mm. who were caught thanks dumbest. to social media. In March 2012, incompetent criminal Michael Baker came upon an unattended I remember him. in Jenkins, Kentucky. While most people would simply walk on by, 20-year-old Baker took a different approach. He grabbed a gas can, stuck a siphon hose into the car, and had his girlfriend, Joanne Sindelin, snap a charming photo as he brandished his middle finger. Mm. The fun could have ended there, but Baker went Stupid. one step further, proudly posting the photo to his Facebook account. Along with friends and family, Jenkins police officials also saw the picture, and Baker was consequently arrested and charged with theft by unlawful... No people. shit, Sherlock. Baker explained to local media outlets that there was hardly any fuel in the squad car, and the whole exercise was intended only as a joke. He told TV station WYMT, We was just standing there and thought it would be funny to take a picture and then post it on Facebook. Sandalin added, yeah, we're sorry, but it was just a joke. A joke I mean, gone too wrong, terribly ads, wrong. We wouldn't put it nationwide on Facebook. We don't steal anyway, but we're sorry. Police Chief Alan Borms told me that... The picture, I mean, the picture that you post on Facebook paints another picture, if, I make sense, if that makes sense. So you can't just say you just come out, we don't steal. The picture show you stealing gas. Or what you do, just stuck the holes in there and said, hey, this would be a cool picture. Come on now. That if Baker was willing to steal from the police, he'd steal from just about anybody. Right. Despite his impressive explanation and his girlfriend's heartfelt apology, Baker spent the night in jail as a result the night. of this photo opportunity. After he was released, he got right back on social media, posting, just got out of jail. Yeah, LOL. I went to jail over Facebook. No, you went to jail for that photo you posted. Right? Nope. Kevin Gaines Jr. Stupid. of Land, Florida was a wanted man in November 2019. The 20-year-old was sought by police on several charges. Possession of a firearm by a delinquent. Grand theft auto. Mm. Mischief and having no valid driver's license. He was also considered armed and dangerous. You'd think with that list, Gaines would want to keep a low profile. Think again. After successfully evading authorities for about a month, Gaines made an interesting decision on December 26th. 
he went live on Instagram. Little did he know, a police deputy had spotted the car Gaines had stolen parked at a house on Beresford Avenue in DeLand. As Gaines broadcast to his Instagram account inside the house, a group of police officers was gathering outside with the live feed confirming Gaines's location. They get to the house. He just shut his live off and said the cops are here. Wait a minute. Did the man in the passenger seat just put Dave car and drive? Like he didn't know how to drive? Dave, you don't know how to drive? I'm just curious. And that's what I be telling y'all. You got to be careful when you're on social media. You're explaining your business because they are always watching. Okay. When Deputy Billy Levin shone a spotlight into the window of the home, the light was visible in the Instagram video, which ended rather suddenly when Gaines realized he'd been caught. Hey, you can tell me to come on out, or we're going to write a search warrant. We'll go in and get him. Yeah, he was on a live video. And you know what? They'll have to write their, their, their search warrant. Come in to get me, buddy. Come on in. As soon as he saw the blue light, he shut the live video off and Gain surrendered to the authorities, who found three firearms inside mm. the house, plus one underneath a car in the driveway. Damn. He was successfully arrested on the many charges he had racked up before giving himself up on Instagram. Mm, 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 mm. Tell me. The ops be watching, boy. British man Michael Ruse was on trial for assault in June 2012. The 21-year-old was accused of violently attacking his friend's father using a baseball bat and a baton, and he had entered a not guilty plea. Being tried for a crime is pretty stressful, but Ruse wasn't Show worried you. about being convicted. In fact, as the trial progressed, he was so convinced that he'd be found not guilty that he shared his high hopes on his Facebook account. Ruse did use a pseudonym on Facebook, posting under the name Michael Miles, but that didn't protect him from the consequences of his foolish words. Throughout his two-week trial, he shared gems like, nearly time to leave for crown and see the stuck-up judge. But the stupidest moment of all came when Ruse shared an update that said, another week at court. A friend commented on the status asking about his case, and Ruse unbelievably responded, yeah, I think I got away with it. To be stupid. He even managed to misspell got. Six people liked this incredibly foolish status update, but one of Ruse's Facebook friends with a taste for justice printed the evidence and got it into the hands of stupid. prosecutors. Since he had been caught essentially confessing to the crime, Ruse had almost no choice but to change his plea to guilty. Ian Pearson, the judge presiding over the case, told Ruse, you pleaded guilty partway through the trial only really because you were stupid enough to put on Facebook what amounted to a full confession. Right. Ruse was sentenced to 46 weeks in prison for the assault. After mm. the incident, Ruse's attorney told the media that the young man needs help with regards to thinking skills. That Your own attorney. A serious understatement. Mm. TurboTax Live matches you. Uh-uh, TurboTax. What is It's crazy. <laughs> Florida resident Whitney Beal made a very dangerous decision. Hey, I bet she gonna sober real quick. Watch this. In October 2015. 
After a night of partying, she drove home drunk. But Beale didn't stop at just one stupid choice. She also decided to use the Periscope app to live stream her reckless journey. Beale can be heard on the video declaring, You're not new. I'm driving home drunk. You stupid idiot. You driving home drunk. You on social media. And you speaking up a DUI. Amid the sound of fellow drivers honking at Beal, she noticed how many viewers were tuning in to her bad idea, saying, 57 people. Oh my God. I didn't know I'd get this many people. I am super drunk in the USA. The light is red, I promise. But don't worry. Beal obviously had safety on her mind, too. I'm pretty she sure you put Periscope viewers. You driving drunk. A lot of people don't know. Driving drunk is not cool. But you doing it while you driving drunk. Some of those watching the video feed called 911. <laughs> I would, too. The police officer was able to locate Beal's car by logging into the live stream. She was pulled over and arrested after failing a field sobriety test. Mm. On the way to the police station, Beale reportedly threw up in the back of the cruiser. Whitney mm. Beale pleaded no contest to a charge of driving under the influence. She was sentenced in February 2016 to 12 months of probation, alcohol evaluation, probation. a 10-day impound of her vehicle, and a six-month suspension of her license. These are standard consequences for drunk driving. But Beale was also sentenced to 150 hours of community oh, service and say. days of weekend work release as a result of her decision to publicize her poor choices. You know what? I always thought, like, you get more concerned when you drunk and trying to get home about the police than when you just been smoking weed and trying to get home. Or maybe that's just me. But I would never put on social media on driving home drunk. Like, that would be crazy of you to do. And you know, you can't be mad at the people on social media because honestly, I feel like they did the right thing because if she wouldn't have got that DUI, she wouldn't have learned that it's bad to do that. I know some of us do it because I'm guilty. I done did it once or three times, but we're not talking about me. We're talking about her and her social media ads. Like, come on, do better, shout it. And I feel like she's going to do it again and do it again because I feel like the little time they did give her is like a slap on the wrist. Like 120, what? You could do that in what? Three weeks? Come on now. Cashing in. 29 year old Orlando Henderson began working at Wells Fargo in Charlotte, North Carolina in April of 2019. By December of the same year, he would be arrested in San Diego on suspicion of stealing almost $90,000 from the bank after his own social media posts helped alert authorities to his crimes. Within just two months of starting his job at Wells Fargo, Henderson began using his access to the bank vault to steal money from customer deposits. He pocketed cash on nearly 20 separate occasions, starting small with a theft of $446 and working his way up to higher amounts. On July 15th, 2019. Listen to this. Even though I'm not stealing. But if I do come up on a lot of money. Or. God forbid. I'm thinking about stealing. And I come up on a lot of money. If, let's just say I got a job. Right. And my job pay me $500 a week. Right. So every month they see where. where every week they see where my job deposit so much money. So that's the same amount I deposit into my bank. I wouldn't make big purchases because come on, why would you don't change your spending habit just because you came up on all that money? Because come on. 
Piper Trio. He took a whopping thirteen thousand four hundred fifty dollars from the vault. Mm. Was not only pocketing money, but also covering up his theft by falsifying bank documents, creating fake deposit tickets, and making false entries. Mm. He was very careful to hide his illegal activity at the bank itself. But it was another story completely when it came to Henderson's social media accounts. He posted Henderson it. Henderson was not shy when it came Stupid. to bragging about his finances online. Over the summer of 2019, he uploaded photos of himself holding impressive stacks of cash. Come on now. He also shared pictures of a Mercedes Benz he had purchased. <sighs> Got to be more careful. Cash down payment. This suspicious activity along with large ATM deposits, attracted the attention of investigators, leading to Henderson's eventual arrest. The charges uh, against uh, uh, Henderson uh. included financial institution fraud, 19 counts of theft, embezzlement, and misapplication, and 12 counts of making false entries. In a deal with prosecutors, he pleaded guilty to bank fraud and transferred He had no choice. On March 20th, 2020. Henderson appeared to have aspirations as a rap artist and often used the nickname AC Foes online. Ironically, he'd adopted the catchphrase, ain't with being broke. Mm. In March 2015, Stupid. Dale Markham had an experience on Facebook that most of us never will. He came across his own wanted photos. The Butler County, Ohio Sheriff's Office had posted photos of 21-year-old Markham to their Facebook page in an effort to track him down. There were several outstanding warrants on Markham, including for assault, abduction, and burglary, which is why so many people were surprised when he used his personal Facebook account to comment on the post. Somehow not realizing that it was a bad idea to announce no shit, Sherlock. Post, identifying him as a criminal suspect, Markham commented, I ain't tripping. Half of them don't even know me. The sheriff's office has no time in responding. If you could stop by the sheriff's <clears> office, that would <throat> be great. <clears throat> hey, it doesn't hurt to ask. Got you there. The neighboring <clears throat> counties, police department <clears throat> even joined in on the absurd that was a joke. thread, asking Markham to please stay in Butler County. Then Butler County Sheriff Richard K. Jones brought Twitter into the mix, tweeting a picture of a jail cell with the message, Hey, Andrew Markham. We've got your room ready. Damn. The interactions went viral, <laughs> with many pointing out how foolish it was for a wanted man to publicly communicate with law enforcement. Through he his own social media. Words. He was in over his head, and the 21-year-old turned himself in. The sheriff's office updated their interested followers with the news. Andrew Dale Markham will be off Facebook temporarily because there is no social media access in the Butler County Jail. He's turned himself in. Thanks to our Facebook and Twitter friends for helping turn up the heat. Despite his bravado on Facebook, Markham didn't hold up so well in real life. I bet he did. Tear stained face in his mugshot. He a thug over social media though. Tribal troll. Melina Roberge and Isabel Legace took a big risk when they embarked <coughs> on an Instagram worthy vacation. And they paid a big price. In 2016, the pair of Canadian women boarded the MSC Princess for a seven-week cruise, traveling from Britain to Ireland, the United States, Bermuda, Colombia, Panama, Ecuador, Peru, Damn. Italy, and Australia. But thanks to a tip-off, I always wanted to go to Sydney. Sydney. On August 28th, police dogs discovered 35 Ooh. kilos of cocaine. Stashed in suitcases. I'm in the wrong cabin, business. Including the drugs found elsewhere on the ship, the entire haul was worth around sixteen million dollars. Mm. Bears had been approached to take the extensive trip by a wealthy Canadian man she would not identify, but called her sugar daddy. They'd met in 2015 when Roberge began working as an escort for the man, and he had offered her the free vacation in May 2016. Not only would she not have to pay for travel. She'd be given spending money and an additional sum when she got home. That money got to her. would be a decoy. She'd room with Legace, who was on the trip to pay off a debt of her own. Their job was to look pretty 
and throw off any suspicion about the drug smuggling that was the true purpose of the cruise. Mm. Roberge assumed the amount of drugs being moved would be small, a few kilos at most. The money and the travel were enticing, but even more attractive was the opportunity to fill her Instagram account with photos of her luxury journey. And the Instagram content was impressive. The Australian tabloids dubbed the beautiful Roberge and Legace cocaine babes, and the lifestyle they documented on social media did seem lavish indeed. They shared photos from the luxury cruise ship and from the, Lord the water. destinations where it stopped. New York, French Polynesia, Peru, the Caribbean. Two days before the ship arrived in Sydney, the women's luggage was stuffed with cocaine by others involved in the crime. They were told to pass through customs with the drugs, but they never had the chance. In April 2018, Roberge was sentenced to eight years in Australian prison mm. for her part in the smuggling attempt. Legace was sentenced in November to seven and a half years. Mm. Both women are likely to spend four years and nine months there before being deported back to Canada. Their fellow Canadian smuggler, 65-year-old Andre Tamman, was Look at the sugar to eight data. years as well. Telling you gotta be more careful. So she finally dropped a dime on her sugar daddy. Mm. It's the game. What's the first thing a thief does when he successfully pulls off a job? In the case of Brag Lisa, about it. the answer is sharing the evidence on Instagram. Stupid ass. In November 2019, a group of young men who stole luxury cars in Leeds, England, decided they should brag about their crimes on social media. They created an Instagram account called Mr. Dingers and began posting photos and videos of themselves posing with the stolen vehicles. The thieves took care to hide their identities, even while publicizing their illegal activity. I pee a dress, buddy. <laughs> Burglars from the ends. Little legends. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Stupid idiots. The fuck is that? Keep it steady so we can see. 21 year old Frankie Allwork shared a photo of himself in front of a stolen Audi A6 worth nearly $85,000. His face obscured by an emoji. 20 year olds James Holroyd and Bryn Carey posed in similar pictures and a video shared on January 7th. 2020 stupid where they drove the stolen Audi. It's not dumb, it's just stupid. They did this exactly for social media. Stupid that ass. video alone garnered more than 30,000 views. Unfortunately for these young men, the West Yorkshire police were already hard at work investigating a series of car thefts in the area that had taken place over a period of several months. When CCTV footage captured all work tossing a cigarette butt into some bushes, investigators were able to retrieve it and test it for DNA, which broke the case wide open in February 2020. Once the trio were in custody, police also found the original incriminating photo of all work with his face clearly visible on one of their mobile phones. It's hard to argue your innocence when you documented the crime yourself. Right. All three Instagrammers admitted to burglary and theft charges in Leeds Crown Court. Allwork was sentenced to four years and six months, Holroyd to 34 months, and Carrie to 32 months. Perhaps social media fame isn't all it's cracked up to be. Mm -hmm. Gotta be more careful. Picture this. In May 2015, 23-year-old Dominic Antonio Alfonseca robbed a bank in Virginia Beach. He walked into the establishment, handed the teller a note demanding cash, received it, and left. 
At this point, most thieves would be satisfied with a job well done. But Al Fonseca didn't stop there. Within 20 minutes of the robbery he just pulled off, he managed to share a photo and video evidence of the act on his Instagram account. Alfonseca posted two videos of the robbery itself, plus a picture of the note he'd handed to the teller. It read, I need 150,000 bands right now. Please, police take three to four minutes to get here. I would appreciate if you ring the alarm a minute after I am gone. Make sure the money doesn't blow up on my way out. When asked about his Instagram activity, Alfonseca claimed that he wanted the police to know that he wasn't armed. And of course, he wanted to share what he was doing. An aspiring rapper, Alfonseca Wait, was what? also looking to gain followers on the platform hoping a big name in the music industry might see his posts. Police located and arrested Alfonseca with a gym bag full of the stolen cash less than half an hour after the crime. He later admitted that he'd asked the teller for money and then took it from the bank, but suggested he wasn't guilty of robbery because he'd asked politely. A robbery is demanding, going and demanding something and taking the money or whatever like that. No, robbery is what it is, robbery. You took a letter and the intent of stealing the money is not yours. It's robbery. Did you get it out your bank account? So you politely asked her so you think it's not robbery? <sighs> okay. Regardless of this bulletproof logic. He Another thing. So you really went through this because you're an inspired rapper. And you need a criminal background to be a rapper? Yep, that makes sense. He was sentenced in 2016 to two years and 11 months in prison. Catch me if you can. 27-year-old Rashia Wilson was a typical mother of three who managed to steal an estimated $20 million from the IRS. In 2010, police in Tampa noticed a decrease in drug dealing in the city, which suggested a different kind of lucrative criminal activity had taken its place. That activity was tax fraud, as discovered in a two-year multi-agency investigation. Baby, they've been doing it. They've been doing it ever since I was born. This ain't that new. Scammers were using stolen social security numbers to file fraudulent tax returns. Wilson, rather than laying low and enjoying her profits, chose to fund a noticeably lavish lifestyle for herself and her children, share incriminating photos of herself holding huge stacks of cash, and to proudly proclaim on Facebook that she was involved in the scam. Her incriminating post read, I'm Rashia, the queen of IRS tax fraud. I'm a millionaire for the record. So if you think indicting me will be easy, it won't. I promise you. Yeah, will. You need more than black and white to hold me down. Shit. And that's to the rat who went and told. As if First Lady don't have the TPD under her spell. I run Tampa right now. As if this social media confession wasn't telling enough. Police also discovered expensive designer items and an unusual number of security cameras at Wilson's home in Waimama, Florida. Mm. Wilson pleaded guilty to wire fraud and aggravated identity theft. During her trial, she claimed her Facebook was hacked and that she didn't write the bragging status that sealed her fate. Despite this flimsy excuse, she received a 21-year sentence in 2013 and was ordered to pay $3.1 in restitution. After successfully appealing in 2014, Wilson was resentenced in 2015 to the same term. Which of these self? I'm gonna tell you guys this. Stop putting all your business on social media. We got to stop that, okay? If you do nothing else, stop putting your business on social media. Because this social media, you got, you got to think about it. It more than you're just your friends looking at your post. Come on now. If you're a real criminal, 
Stop putting your business out there. I know a lot of people who probably don't got away with shit because they don't post it. <sighs> but anyway, y'all be careful out there. But make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all of those things. Let me know if you guys like these reaction videos. If you yourself would like to send in a, re a reaction, uh, a video you want me to react to, just make sure you put it in the comment section below. Or you can also send it to the email address that's in the description box. It's just crazy, you guys. Why would you want to? I don't know. This social media stuff is killing people, okay? Because I never heard of a social media criminal. First thing for everything, I guess. That shit is crazy. I just don't get it. It just ain't meant for me to be getting. 